you and I talked uh, the day after you made an impassioned speech to the state uh, in front of a group of supporters, but really uh, intended for Republicans in, in your state legislatures to say, don't do this. Don't do this. You're, you are going to do real harm. And the fact is, the populace, the, the population of North Carolina is on your side as it relates to abortion rights. But the Republicans did it anyway. Yeah, this is not who we are as North Carolinians. And the thing about it is that every single Republican voted to override my veto. Every single Democrat voted to sustain it. Even Republicans who had promised that they wouldn't do it. That shows you that we just cannot believe them. Many Republicans are so extreme, they're now trying to moderate a little bit during the campaign, but we cannot believe them because every single one of them voted that way. Look, this is happening all across the country. Women's reproductive freedom is under attack. We saw it in the Supreme Court today. I mean, clearly they're just going after women's reproductive freedom in every way that they can possibly think of. That's why it's so important for us to defeat candidates like Mark Robinson here in North Carolina with a great Democratic nominee, who's our current Attorney General, Josh Stein. And that is why we have to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. You know, they will put Roe v. Wade into federal law if we can get a Congress that uh, would send them a bill. They were here today. There's no better place than North Carolina for them to come today than to, to celebrate health care. I mean, we already have a, a million people on the Affordable Care Act. We've just expanded Medicaid in a bipartisan way. And now we're signing up about a thousand people a day. And these are our child care workers. Uh -huh. These are people who look after our seniors. And Donald Trump and his the people like him want to take it away. Candidates like him want to take the health care card right out of the hands of people who have just gotten it here in North Carolina. We have to stop them. Which I like, it's hard to understand. I mean, I lost count of the number of times Republicans tried to what, what would reveal and replace uh, uh, Obamacare over the years. In the end, they're still running on that. No one in all those efforts, dozens of efforts, came up with something better, came up with an alternative. I, I think we can all acknowledge everything can be done better, but that's not what Republicans were trying to do. This is kind of like the southern border issue. This is kind of like reproductive rights or IVF in, in Alabama. It's not clear what the goal is other than to be disruptive. Well, they talk about repeal and replace, but there's no replace. There's no replace, yeah. Uh, every, every single time they talk about getting rid of health care for people. And, and just, just like you say, the southern border, here we had legislation that was the strongest border protection uh, ever. And Republicans, because it didn't fit their political narrative and because Trump told them that he wanted to keep this issue alive for the campaign, they pulled out of this agreement. And, and that is the way they operate. They're going for power and they're not paying attention to the real issues that are facing the people of North Carolina and the people across this country. So we're going to work very hard. I think the road to the presidency runs through North Carolina. And when you look at our statewide candidates, they've nominated people like Mark Robinson, uh, like Dan Bishop for attorney general, who's in Congress now and part of the Bobert Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene cabal. They've nominated uh, uh, someone for superintendent of public schools in North Carolina who believes that teachers ought to have guns in the classroom, who homeschools all of her children and took them to January 6th at the Capitol. I mean, that is the kind of extreme Republican lineup that's in North Carolina and why we believe that we can get a massive turnout in North Carolina for President Biden, for our slate of Democratic candidates, and turn North Carolina blue uh, in 2024. We're working very hard, and we were glad to see the president and vice president today. They've been here quite a bit. We are a targeted state, and we're going to continue to work hard to make sure that this election preserves our democracy, preserves women's reproductive freedom, preserves the opportunity for people to get health care, because I think that's what everyday Americans 
care about right now. We have a piece of news in here. Uh, Marilyn Lands has just uh, won the House district seat uh, in Alabama uh, on, on a platform, and she's a Democrat, on a platform of uh, uh, appealing, uh, repealing Alabama's no exception abortion ban, fully restoring access to IVF and protecting the rights to contraception. So this is the things of what you speak. For those of us who uh, don't understand how North Carolina works, why is it that statewide a guy like you got more votes than Donald Donald Trump did um, in in 2020, but at the same time you've got uh, veto-proof majorities in in the, your, your state houses. What's what's the what's the thing we have to understand that puts Mark Robinson in play? Given that he his the things he stands for stand in stark contrast to what North Carolinians say they want, particularly as it relates to things like abortion rights. Well, the first thing is technologically diabolical partisan gerrymandering. That's how they control a supermajority in the legislature. For four years, we had broken that supermajority, and every single one of my vetoes held. I think when you have a lower-profile race like lieutenant governor, uh, he won in a crowded Republican primary with 30-some percent of the vote, and it was in a presidential year, a, a lieutenant governor's race can, can not get very much attention. People are finding out who Mark Robinson is now, and I believe that North Carolinians do not want to go back to the days of the culture war. Remember, I got elected at a time when we were still walking through the rubble of the bathroom bill yep. battlefield in North Carolina that was wrong uh, in and of itself, but also hurt our state economically. We were able to get that repealed. Now you have someone like Mark Robinson who wants to go back to the culture war. Donald Trump plays into that narrative as well. I think people are tired of it. I think particularly now with this assault on women's reproductive freedom, when you add that to the anti-LGBTQ, when you add that to the jerking away health care from people and then the positives that, that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have done for this country, connecting people to high-speed Internet, lowering the cost of drugs and, and, and insulin, yeah. making uh, one of the best investments in infrastructure we have seen in, in a generation. All of that is positive. We're going to be talking about that, but we're going to be taking it to the Republicans as well. I just want to bring you back to that comment you just made about the, the bathroom bill. Um, there, there's a letter that from the Connecticut Democrats who uh, wrote written to officials at the Connecticut Department of Ed, uh, Economic and Community Development to explore opportunities to attract businesses from North Carolina in the event that Mark Robinson is elected. Uh, uh, you know, the nomination of Mark Robinson as a candidate for governor of North Carolina. We're in a time unemployment is low. Wages are going up. Um, GDP is strong. It's not the most even economy in the world, but it's going in the right direction. It's a bad time for a state, particularly North Carolina, but any state to come up with things that are going to cause businesses who need to keep their employees happy because it's hard to get employees these days. It's a, it's a bad time to be making those kinds of decisions about about abortion and about gay rights and, and things like that. Yeah, why would we make those decisions that would turn people away? I love my buddies in Connecticut, but we are not going to elect Mark Robinson so they can stay away. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.